All right, thanks for watching. And some of you know that the derivative of x to the x is very nice to evaluate. And so you may wonder, what about the integral from x to the x? Now, I hate to break this to you, but x to the x, it's one of those functions that doesn't have an antiderivative that you can write in terms of sine, cosine, exp exponential, and polynomial functions. So it doesn't have an antiderivative in terms of elementary functions like e to the minus x squared or 1 over ln of x, even the integral from 0 to 1 of this function, I don't think you can write it not nicely. However, it turns out, even though you cannot do this, you can still express this integral as a very beautiful series. And that's what I'm going to do today. So, step one. Well, x to the x, let's write this as you know exponential function. So integral from 0 to 1 of x to the x dx. That's integral from 0 to 1 of, remember, something to the something is e to the ln of something. e of ln x to the x dx. And then ln, the nice thing is, you know, it destroys the powers. So we have e to the x ln of x dx. And as I said, you would like to write this as a series, but we do know that e to the x can be written as a series. More precisely, e to the z is just the sum, let's say from 0 to infinity, of z to the n over n factorial. Let's use this expression and plug it in into this integral, which tells you that our integral equals to integral from 0 to 1 sum from n from 0 to infinity of x ln of x to the n over n factorial. And by the way, this is perfectly valid because this expression is valid for every z. So you can plug in z equals to x ln of x. And then let's write this a little bit more nicely. That's uh, integral from 0 to 1 of, never mind. Now, I'm going to do something that's very nasty and that's usually illegal, but I'm feeling like a bad boy today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to interchange this integral and this sum. So in analysis, you don't always do this, but I think in this case it's justified. Something with convergent series. So let's interchange those and get x ln of x to the n over n factorial dx. And what's nice about this is that the 1 over n factorial, we can now pull outside of the integral. And you're left with integral sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n ln of x to the n dx. So we are just left to evaluating this integral and in fact, let's, let's do that. So step two, let's evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n, ln of x to the n, dx. Now, of course, this calls for a substitution because, you know, derivative of ln of x, it's like 1 over x, and we do have an x lying around here. But it turns out there's a nicer substitution in this case, and it'll become apparent later on when we'll do e to the minus something. Namely, in this case, it's better to choose u equals to minus ln of x. Because it turns out with this substitution, we can transform this sucker into one thing that we know. 
Okay, and then du is minus 1 over x dx, and therefore dx is minus x du. But remember in substitutions, you never mix x and u together, so it's like never put your x's together. Okay, and then so, but what is x? We have ln of x is minus u, so x is e to the minus u. So this becomes uh, minus e to the minus u, du. And lastly, well, those two things, let's plug this in. So u of 0 is minus ln of 0, but technically it's an improper integral, so instead of doing 0, we do 0 plus, and then it's minus minus infinity, so it's infinity, and u of 1, it's minus ln of 1, which is 0. And now we are ready to uh, substitute that integral. And therefore, we get the following integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n, ln of x to the n dx becomes the following. Again, the 0 becomes infinity. The 1 becomes 0. And then x, we found that it's e to the minus u uh, to the n. ln of x is u. So, uh, sorry, minus u to the n, and then dx, we found that it's minus e to the minus u du. And, well, let's clean this up a little bit. So first of all, although we have this minus, it's nice because those two integrals are in reverse, so this minus rectifies you know, our wrong order. So integral from 0 to infinity. It's like law and order integral style. Okay, and then this e to the minus u, there's this factor of n, but there's also this additional factor of 1, and you're left with e to the minus, e to the minus u to the n plus 1, and then this minus u, for reason that will be clearer later, we'll write this as minus 1 to the n u to the n du, and then what you're left with in the end is minus 1 to the n integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus n plus 1 u, u to the n du. And it might still not be clear, you know, what's going on here, but Let's just substitute a little bit more. So instead of writing n plus 1u, let's do a substitution. t equals to n plus 1u. So we got step 3. Again, if you're confused, just substitute. So t equals to n plus 1u. Then dt is n plus 1 du du is dt over n plus 1. And then the nice thing is multiplying by n plus 1 doesn't change the bounds at all. So we're at, we get that this integral here equals to minus 1 to the n integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t. And then u is just t over n plus 1. So we get t to the n over n plus 1 to the n. And then we have this extra factor of dt over n plus 1, which tells you at the end that this becomes n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1. So that's n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1. And which we can just shove, like put outside of the integral. And so we are left with the following. We get that this is minus 1 to the n 
over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t t to the n dt. All right. And this looks a little bit more familiar if you know what the gamma function is. So recall, so recall maybe in the ironic sense, we have that gamma z is integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus t, t to the z minus 1 dt. which is, by the way, an analog of the factorial function. And the no nice thing is, notice how similar those two things are. In fact, if you think about this, this weird integral is nothing other than gamma of n plus 1. So our integral becomes then minus 1 to the n over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 gamma of n plus 1. And as I said, the gamma function is an analog of the factorial function. So it's the extension of the factorial function. And in fact, if you integrate by part this a bunch of times, this is really the same as n factorial. So in the end, our integral becomes minus 1 to the n n plus 1 to the n plus 1, n factorial. In other words, this integral here, after substituting a bunch of times, we get that it's equal to this thing. But we're not quite done because we're not quite dealing with this integral, but our original one, x to the x, but remember what that equals to. Equals to the following. So maybe step four. We found that the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the x dx, that equals to sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, and our integral that we calculated x to the n, ln of x to the n dx. But we just found that that's the same as the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial minus 1 to the n, and then over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 times n factorial. And here's the most beautiful part of the today, I guess. The n factorials cancel out, and you're left with this thing here. Sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n plus 1 to the n plus 1, which if you like is 1 over 1 to the 1, plus minus 1 over 2 to the 2, plus 1 over 3 to the 3, etc., etc. So you can just... If you use another change of variables, if you like, you can transform this sum into sum starting from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n to the n. In other words, if you put everything together, we get that the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the x dx can be written as this very nice sum. Sum from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n to the n, which is this sum here, 1 over 1 to the 1 minus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 cubed minus 1 over 4 to the 4th, etc., etc. So, although we didn't evaluate this, we do have this really cool thing where if you take the alternating sums of n to the n, it actually equals to this integral. So, which if you like, you can define the integral that way. 
And of course you notice there's this ugly thing about alternating sums. Turns out, and this is again the beauty of math, you can remedy this a little bit. Namely, there's a related function to this that eliminates the alternativeness. Okay. The alternating s, alternative fact. Namely, so if you like this a bonus, if you take the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the minus x dx, again, which you cannot evaluate in terms of elementary functions, then this equals to integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus ln x ln of x dx, which again, you know, by the um, series for e, this is the sum from 0 to infinity of minus x ln of x to the n over n factorial dx. Let's be nasty of interchange sum and integration. Yeah, that's the sum from 0 to infinity of the, uh, I guess, minus 1 to the n over n factorial, the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, x to the n ln of x to the n dx. Here, I, I skipped a bunch of steps. First of all, I interchange the integral and the sum. I put the n factorial outside. But I also wrote this as minus 1 to the n, which you can also put outside. And the nice thing is, this integral, we already evaluated that. Namely, it equals to this minus 1 to the n, n factorial over junk business. So, by what we did today, that's the sum from n from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n factorial times minus 1 to the n n factorial over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. Again, beautiful, the minus 1 to the n's cancel out. Sorry, the n factorial cancel out. The minus 1 to the n, the nice thing is, this becomes minus 1 to the 2n, which is 1 because 2n is even, and you're left with this sum from 0 to infinity of n plus 1 to the n plus 1, which is really the same as the sum starting from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the n, which is precisely the same thing, except you don't have the pluses and minuses. So 1 over 1 to the 1 plus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3q, plus blah, blah, blah. And so we get that this integral, integral from 0 to 1 of x to the minus x dx, that equals to the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the n, which again is 1 over 1 to the 1, plus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3q, plus dot, dot, dot. Beautiful, or shall I say, x to the minus x to full. <laughs> All right, and so if you like that and you like more integrals and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.